we decided to set out on doing this program about integrating a historic lifestyle into our normal lifestyle. Unfortunately, I'm a little weird, and this is my normal lifestyle. <laughs> hearth cooking because it's not just a skill that's like reminiscent, beautiful, or fun. If the power goes out and you have a hearth, it's a thing. You might need to cook something. You might want to learn how to tame a fire, how to control the heat enough to make eggs or something for your family in the middle of the winter when the power goes out. The role of the hearth, the word hearth, has the word heart in it. It's the center of the home. It's the heat source. And this is basically where your life would take place. This is where you have your scullery, this is where you do your prep work, your laundry. Um, it's not a tidy place. This house, the Hibbs House, is located in Washington Crossing Historic Park. And this is a 19th century home, so it wasn't here when Washington crossed the Delaware. But it's very similar to the architecture. It's a very old home. It's actually not been updated, so it's here. Uh, and it's one of the nicest homes. Washington crossed the Delaware here in 1776 on Christmas Day. It surprised the Hessians, and it was the turning point of the revolution. So this is a huge, I mean, as part of our history, uh, this is it. I started learning how to cook here when I was 14 or 15. I think I first fired up that bake oven when I was 16. I volunteered here. When I was in high school, I feel really attached to it. It's, I feel like um, some people get attached to things or possessions, but I get really attached to buildings, and this one is one of the buildings that I'm attached to. Most homes in the early America were small, and this is where everybody lived in one or two rooms. That's it. This would keep your house warm all year round. You notice that we have doors here and here and windows here and here. This provides a really great cross breeze for air conditioning or airflow. This was the center of your home. So we cook once a day, uh, maybe around one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon. And it's a very large meal, very reminiscent of Thanksgiving. And what we don't eat for our main meal, we eat for the later in the day, a uh, supper. Uh, and again, again, for again in the morning to reheat as we're making the meal for the next day. But when we hit the Industrial Revolution, things changed for America here. Um, people had to go to work because factories were being built. Children couldn't stay home, so they started going to school. Um, and so we had to rearrange our feeding schedule and how we eat in a normal home um, because of this. It changed how children were educated, which was no longer at home, um, and how we ate, which is incredible. Um, and the heart still remained the center of the home, but at that point it was probably a heat source and to make all three meals, which is very similar to how we deal with home today. Um, Prudy is probably going to help us out today. Historically, um, children are raised around the fire. It's the center of the home. We're going to cook a fire. It's important to me for her to not necessarily have the respect for it yet, but to understand that this is a skill and this is something that's part of her life and I want her to remember the smell of wood smoke. Well today we're making chicken and apples. We have eggs and some butter and bacon. All of these things, except for the chicken, which probably had been harvested within the past 10 or 12 hours, are things that can last a long time. Um, this is the winter season. Not much is coming from the garden. We are not programmed to think the way that you needed to think historically. Um, back then, in the summertime, if you had an abundant harvest of berries, you would eat a bit, but you remember that winter comes and you need to take care of yourself and your family. So at that point, you start um, putting food by, pickling and preserving. If you buy pickles at the market today, do you know when those cucumbers were grown? Probably not last month. We basically keep building a fire to build coals. We're going to put the coals underneath the frying pan. It's going to radiate heat upwards. So basically, we're making a burner.
chicken on the gridiron. Um, we're gonna spatchcock it, which I think is a newer word, but basically What's that word? spatchcock. Spatchcock. <laughs> yeah, settle down. What does that mean? <laughs> it means we're gonna cut it down the spine and open it up. So we're gonna cook the whole chicken in one piece without it being around. It'll be flat. And the gridiron is really similar to a grill. So it makes it sound a little bit more sophisticated, but I'm really grilling inside. It's gonna be a lot of smoke because there's gonna be butter, because butter makes everything better. I'm gonna use the same bed of coals, but I'm gonna build it up a lot. Adding more here, and then grabbing this, which is our grid iron. Um, we're also going to do some baked apples. The recipes that I'm going to use are coming from the 19th century cookbook, but apples are not new. Cooking is not new, and most of these ingredients are not new in the 19th century, so we basically are going to be cooking from an, a normal person's household. bake oven over here and we fired it up. Um, this is a beehive style oven. Uh, it has a dome. You can see it usually on the outside of the building and it's pretty common in this particular area. Um, this is basically lined with bricks on the top and bottom and the bricks do their job of retaining heat. So what we're doing is building a fire in there and those coals and that fire is going to heat up those bricks and we're going to eventually take out all those coals. It's really different from our oven today because it's not consistent in temperature. It's consistently dropping. So you start off with the highest heat that you need, which is bread, and then you would break, go down to pies, and then puddings, and then creams, and biscuits, and... It's pretty cool. <laughs> we also have some leftover mashed potatoes, which is rare in our house, but leftover mashed potatoes that we're going to put some cook and bacon grease and make little cakes with them too and then we're going to eat all of the bacon. So our bacon fat is warmed up and I am going to look for a little wooden spoon to make a, kind of like a pancake if you will. We're going to drop it in and the egg will cause it to set 